Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to introduce you to an exciting new product we offer here at Market Tech called the Light Hub. The Light Hub is a multi-laser light engine that's capable of combining up to six different wavelengths into a single output. The single beam output can then be used either free space or coupled into a fiber optic cable to transport the laser light into your application. The individual lasers can be chosen by the user from up to 25 different wavelengths, anywhere from the near UV to the near infrared. The lasers are either diode laser modules or diode pump solid state lasers or DPSS lasers as we call them. One of the many unique features of the Light Hub is the ability to purchase the system with just one or two lasers and upgrade the system by purchasing additional lasers later on as your budget allows. In addition, each laser can be independently controlled. The system includes a general user interface, or GUI, which is a software package that allows the user to monitor and control the lasers through their PC. Functions such as setting the power and turning the lasers on and off are available through the interface. The light hub and the lasers themselves can also be controlled through open source software such as Micromanager or through control cards that interface with proprietary software programs like Metamorph. Another unique feature of the light hub and lasers contained in the system is the ability to modulate and control the power or intensity of each laser through analog and digital modulation inputs. We will now go through the installation procedure. Today we'll be installing a four laser light hub configuration. This particular configuration includes three diode laser modules, 405 nanometer, 488 nanometer, and 642 nanometer. And also a diode pump solid state laser at 561 nanometer. The system should be fixed to a secure base. In this instance, we're using a small aluminum breadboard, which also acts as a heat sink for the system. It's important to provide adequate heat sinking for the system you have purchased. Each diode laser module in the system requires the following parts to be connected to the back of the laser. A power supply, a USB cable, a breakout cable, and a key switch box. The breakout cable and the key switch box are connected together and are secured to the back of the light hub on each laser. The USB cable and the power supply are also connected to the back of the light hub on each laser. The DPSS laser module in the system requires the following parts to be connected together, which are different. A power supply, a special USB cable, a laser head cable, and a controller that includes a key switch. The laser head cable is secured to the back of the light hub on the DPSS laser, and the controller and the other end of the cable connected together. The USB cable and the power supply are also connected to the controller. We will be using a function generator to control the digital and analog modulation of each laser. While the modulation input signals can be directly sent to the three diode modules, the DPSS laser requires an acousto-optic modulator to be installed in front of the laser, inside the light hub. The modulator also requires a separate driver. This is shown here to the left of the light hub. Cables for both the analog and digital signals from the function generator are attached to the input of the AOM driver and an output cable from the driver is attached to the connector next to where the DPSS laser is installed in the light hub. The AOM driver also has its own separate power supply. This is only appropriate to use the AOM when using a DPSS laser and is not required for the diodes. Since there are four USB cables from the light hub, it is recommended that a USB hub is used to combine these cables into a single input into your computer as shown here. Finally, we are ready to install the fiber optic cable. For this configuration, a polarization maintaining single mode fiber with FC-APC termination is used. Other types of fiber configurations are available depending on your particular requirements. Please note there's a shutter on the output of the light hub that should be in the closed position before installing the fiber optic or turning on the light hub itself. The fiber installation and operation of the light hub will be shown in part two of this video series. Thank you for your attention and we hope to see you again.